My dear students, welcome to our video tutorial for quarter 3, week 4 in Mathematics 9. Again, this is Teacher Mael at your service. In your week 4 modules, we will be solving problems involving parallelogram, trapezoid, and kite. Now let us check if you still remember the definition of quadrilaterals and its properties. A quadrilateral is a closed plane figure consisting of four line segments or sides. It has also four vertices. And remember that the sum of the measures of the four angles is 360 degrees. Let us recall the definition of the following quadrilaterals. We have parallelogram. Do you still remember the definition of a parallelogram? It has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. Now at this time, we will recall the properties of a parallelogram. First, any two opposite sides are congruent as indicated in the figure. Second, any two opposite angles are congruent. You have there the symbol and the figure that indicates that the two opposite angles are congruent. Third, any two consecutive angles are supplementary. When we say supplementary, if we're going to add the measures of the two consecutive angles, their sum is 180 degrees. Next, you have there diagonals bisect each other. And lastly, diagonal forms two congruent triangles. We have also the trapezoid. Remember, it has only one pair of opposite sides parallel. The median is one half of the sum of the lengths of the bases. Isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid wherein the two non-parallel sides or the legs are congruent. Now, in an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are congruent. As indicated in the figure, you have there the congruent angles or the base angles. Opposite angles are supplementary. So, opposite angles, the one with the same color. So, if we're going to add the opposite angles, their sum is 180 degrees. Diagonals are congruent. Okay, that's, a, that's all about trapezoid. Let's have a kite. In a kite, the perpendicular bisector of at least one diagonal is the other diagonal. Now, in the given figure, you have there um, diagonal CD bisect diagonal AB. So, your Diagonal AB, it is divided now into two congruent segments. And angle D, since it is bisected by diagonal CD, your angle D is divided into two congruent angles. And your angle C as well is divided into two congruent angles. And if you notice, on the side, you have there side AC is congruent to side BC and side AD is congruent also to side BD. And the area of a kite is half the product of the length of its diagonals. So these are the important concepts and properties that we have to remember because we will be applying them later in solving problems. So my dear students, are you ready now? So Let's get started. We have here example number one. ABCD is a parallelogram. Give the following. Number one question. The opposite sides that are parallel and congruent. So we will name the opposite sides that are parallel and congruent. So we have there side AB is parallel to side DC and side AD is parallel to side BC. 
At the same time, side AB is congruent to side DC and side AD is congruent also to side BC. Number two, give the opposite angles that are congruent. We have angle A is congruent to angle C, angle B is congruent to angle D. Question number three. Give the consecutive and supplementary angles. When we say consecutive, that means nagsunod. And when we say supplementary, if we're going to add the two angles na nagsunod, their sum is 180 degrees. So that is why we have there measure of angle A plus measure of angle B is equal to 180. The same thing with angle B and angle C. Angle C plus measure of angle D, measure of angle D plus measure of angle A. Their sum is 180 degrees. They are consecutive at the same time they are supplementary angles. Number four, the diagonals that bisect each other. So we have here two diagonals that meet at point E. So if we're going to consider Diagonal AC, it bisect BD, therefore BE is congruent to ED. And if we're going to consider diagonal BD, which bisects diagonal AC, so therefore your AC is divided into two equal segments, and that is AE, which is congruent to segment EC. Number five, give the two congruent triangles. Now, if we are going to consider diagonal BD, the two triangles that are congruent are triangle BCD and triangle DAB. And if we are going to consider diagonal AC, triangle ADC is congruent to triangle CBA. I hope you are following me. Example 2. Quadrilateral life is a parallelogram. Find the length of each side and each angle. Analyze the given values carefully. Letter A question. If measure of angle L is equal to quantity X plus 15 degrees and measure of angle F is equal to 2X plus 5 degrees, what is the measure of angle L? Now, the first thing for us to do so that you will be guided when solving problems like this, we have to label the figure with a given measure. So, it is given that angle L is X plus 15 degrees and angle F measures 2X plus 5 degrees. We are going to solve for angle L. And before we can find the measure of angle L, we have to solve first for the value of x. So remember, in the definition or in the properties that opposite angles are congruent because the given is a parallelogram. So therefore, we can say that measure of angle L is equal or congruent to the measure of angle F. So let us substitute the values of the angles given. So we have here angle L is x plus 15 and measure of angle F is equal to 2x plus 5. And we are going to combine similar terms. We have there x and then we transpose or transfer 2x to the other side. So since this is positive, so it becomes now negative 2x is equal to copy 5 then your 15 transfer to the other side or we apply here subtraction property of equality so your positive 15 becomes negative 15. So x minus 2x. So you have their negative x is equal to negative 10 because 5 minus 15 is negative 10. Now in order to eliminate negative in x, we have to multiply both sides by negative 1. So, therefore, we can say that your x is equal to 10. Now, since we have already the value of x, which is 10, we cannot solve for the measure of angle L. 
So to solve for the measure of angle L, we will substitute the value of x. So since measure of L is equal to x plus 15, substitute x with the value which is 10. So that would be 10 plus 15 and that is equal to 25. Therefore, the measure of angle L is 25 degrees. And remember that angle L is equal to angle F. So therefore, the measure also of angle F is equal to 25 degrees. Letter B. If measure of angle L and measure of angle F is equal to 25 degrees, what is the measure of angle I? What is also the measure of angle E? Now, to solve the measure of angle I, remember that consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary. Remember that angle L and angle I are supplementary. And angle I and angle E are opposite angles. Therefore, whatever the measure of angle I, that will be also equal to the measure of angle E. So measure of angle L plus measure of angle I is equal to 180 degrees because they are supplementary because they are consecutive angles. Then substitute the value of angle L which is 25 degrees then copy measure of angle I is equal to 180 degrees. Now since we are looking for the value of angle I we will eliminate 25 degrees on the other side. So, we are going to apply here subtraction property of equality. So, minus 25 and minus 25 also on, the, on both sides of the equation. So, 25 minus 25, that will be 0. So, what will remain here is only the measure of angle I. And 180 degrees minus 25 is equal to 155 degrees. So, therefore, measure of angle I is equal to 150 5 degrees. Now, since the measure of angle I, as I've said a while ago, is equal to measure of angle E, therefore, the measure of angle E is also equal to 155 degrees. Letter C. What is the measure of angle LES? As you can see in the figure, you have there angle LES. Okay, as you can see, angle LES and angle LEF form a linear pair. When we say linear pair, the two angles are adjacent and they form a straight line. Therefore, their sum is 180 degrees. And to solve for angle LES, you have there, angle LES is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of angle LEF. So let us substitute the value of angle LEF. So we have there 180 minus 155. So therefore, the measure of angle LES is 25 degrees. Example number three. Quadrilateral wish is a parallelogram. We have here the question. If psi wi is equal to 3y plus 3 and psi hs is equal to y plus 3, how long is hs? So are we going to solve this one? Remember that opposite sides of a parallelogram are Congruence. If we're going to label the figure, so you have there WI is 3Y plus 3, and you have there HS measures Y plus 3. Before we can solve for the length of HS, we have to solve first for the value of Y. So for the solution, we have here WI is equal to HS. Then substitute each value, so you have 3y plus 3 is equal to y plus 3. So next, combine similar terms. So we have here 
3y and combine the y, the positive y will become negative y. Copy 13 and you have there 3 will become negative. So transpose to the other side. So that, that's the reason we're going to combine similar terms. So 3y minus 2, I mean 3y minus y will be equal to 2y and 13 minus 3 is equal to 10. Then we are going to eliminate 2 beside y. So we are going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we only have here, we can cancel that. So your y is equal to 5. So since we have already the value of y, which is 5, we can solve now for the length of hs. Now, let us substitute value of y. You have there hs is equal to y plus 13. So replace y with 5 plus 13. Therefore, your hs is equal to 18. And since wi is equal to hs, therefore, wi is also equal to 18. Or, substitute wi with 3y plus 3 with a value of y which is 5. Still, we will get 18. Example number 4. In an isosceles trapezoid, a, b, c, d... Measure of angle A is 3x plus 4t and measure of angle D is equal to x plus 60. Find the measure of angle A and measure of angle B. Remember that base angles of an isosceles trapezoids are congruent. In the given figure, the bases are BC and AD. So therefore, the base angles are angle B and C. And you have there also angle A and angle D. Before we're going to find the measure of angle A, we need to find first the value of X. So for the solution, measure of angle A is equal to measure of angle D. That is by definition of base angles. Substitute the value for each angle. So we have 3x plus 40 is equal to x plus 60. Then, you are going to combine similar terms. So combine all the one with x. So you have 3x and transpose your positive x to the left. So that will become negative x. And copy 60. So you are 40. Transfer it to the other side or apply subtraction property of equality. So you have there 60 minus 40. So 3x minus x is equal to 2x and 60 minus 40 is equal to 20. And divide both sides by 2 in order to eliminate 2 so that only x will be left. So therefore, you have there your x is equal to 10. Now since we already have the value of x which is 10, so we can solve now for the measure of angle A. So let us so, we have here measure of angle A is equal to 3x plus 40. Substitute the value of x which is 10. So, you have there 3 times 10 plus 40. So, we have here 3 times 10 is equal to 30 plus 40. So, therefore, measure of angle A is equal to 70. And since angle A is congruent to angle D, so we can also say that the measure of angle D is also equal to 70. And next for us to solve is the measure of angle B. Now since angle A and angle B are supplementary angles, therefore, if we're going to add the measure of angle A plus measure of angle B, that is equal to 180. Substitute the value of angle A, which is 70. So we have here 70 plus measure of angle B is equal to 180 degrees. So apply subtraction property of equality here so that we can eliminate 60 or simply transfer or transpose 70 to the other side. So we only have here measure of angle B is equal to 180 and that positive 70 will become 
negative or minus 70 on the other side. So, measure of angle B is equal to 110. Since angle B and angle C are base angles of the same base, so which means they are also congruent. So, angle C also measures 110 degrees. Example number 5. MNOP is an isosceles trapezoid with a given median QR. Letter A. If base PO is equal to 17 centimeters and base MN is equal to 11 centimeters, how long is QR? Remember that QR here is the median. Remember that median is equal to one half of the sum of the two bases. So for the solution, QR is equal to one half of the sum of base PO and base MN. So let us substitute the length of each base. So you have there one half times 17 plus 11. So, 17 plus 11, so you have there 28. And what is one half of 28? It's 14. So, therefore, the length of our median QR is 14 centimeters. Question letter B. If MN is equal to 10 centimeters and QR is equal to 25, find the length of the other base which is PO. So given here is the length of one of its base and the median. So we are going to find the length of the other base. Remember that your QR here is the median and to solve this, that is one half of the sum of the two bases. So that we will be guided. So let us substitute the following or the given in the problem. So your QR is 25, then your PO is the unknown, then your MN is 10. So we can also write it this way. 25 understood that is over 1, then PO plus 10 all over 2. 2 there is from 1 half, so that is over 2. Now we are going to eliminate 2 there below PO plus 10. We can cross multiply or we can multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So we can cancel the 2 there on the right side. Then you multiply 2 times 25. That is, that is 50 is equal to PO plus 10. Then uh, we will transpose 10 to the other side or apply subtraction property of equality. So that will become 50 minus 10 is equal to PO. So 50 minus 10 is equal to 40. Or we can say that PO is equal to 40 centimeters. Example number 6. Quadrilateral ABCD is a kite. Now, by looking at the given figure, we can say that side DA is congruent to side AB and side DC is congruent to side BC. And the two diagonals there are perpendicular to each other. So they form right, angle, right angles upon intersecting. And diagonal AC bisect diagonal D, B. Now we have your question number one. What is the area of kite A, B, C, D if diagonal A, C is 13 and diagonal B, D is 7? Remember that the area of a kite is equal to one half of the product of the lengths of the two diagonals. So let us substitute the values for each diagonal here to solve for the area of the kite. So area of the kite is equal to one half of the product of AC and BD. So substitute, you have there one half 
times the quantity 13 times 7, and that is 91. And what is one half of 91? That is 45.5. Therefore, the area of kite A, B, C, D is 45.5 square centimeters. So it, it is already in the square unit because we are uh, looking for the area. Example or question letter B. If the area of the kite A, B, C, D is 75 square centimeters and the diagonal B, D is 10 centimeters long, how long is the other diagonal? So since the diagonal B, D is given which is 10 cm long, so what is to be found here is the diagonal AC. So to solve for AC, we have here area of kite ABCD is equal to one half of the product of the two diagonals. So since it is already given that the area of kite ABCD is 75, so substitute, then copy one half, then since we are going to look for the AC, side AC, because that is the unknown, so you copy AC. And substitute the value of side DB, which is 10. Okay, that is by substitution. Or to understand better, we can write it this way. 75 is equal to AC times 10 all over 2. 2 there is from 1 half. No, that is the denominator 2. Now, to eliminate 2, you can cross multiply, you can multiply 2 with 75, or we can apply the, or we can multiply both sides of the equation by, by 2. So, we can cancel the two twos here. So, you multiply 2 times 75, that is 150, and AC times 10 is 10 AC. So, we are going to divide both sides by 10 so that only AC will remain. So, therefore, okay, you can cancel that. Therefore, your AC is equal to 15. So, therefore, diagonal AC measures 15 centimeters. Now, to check if your answer is really correct, so what we're going to do is to equate the area of the kite ABCD using the given length or using the length of the two diagonals. So you have there 75 is equal to 1 half. Substitute your AC which is 15 and the length of your DB which is 10. Then you multiply 15 times 10. So you have there 150 divided by 2 or 1 half of 150 is 75. So therefore, we found out that the two equations or that both sides of the equation are equal and that is true. So therefore, the length of diagonal AC which is 15 is correct. So I hope you learned something with this video and continue studying because sa math, ang buhay ay aangat. Thank you for watching!